This is the second mass spectrometry video and this one's all about using mass spectrometry with organic compounds. So if you run a mass spectrum of a organic compound it's able to tell you two things about the molecule. It's able to tell you the MR of the molecule, so what its mass is, and it's also able to tell you fragments, so that's little pieces that actually make up the whole molecule. So we're going to look at how these two are possible from the spectrum. So the first thing to point out is just a little bit about how the process works and again I'm just keeping it very very simple for the purpose of the video. So the organic molecule, so I'm representing that as X, is fired or bombarded with electrons from an electron gun and the purpose of that is to knock out an electron, so there's the electron that's been knocked out and it will put a positive charge onto X and it's this that's going to be detected by the mass spectrometer and again it's going to measure the mass to charge ratio so the m over z ratio mass to charge ratio now just as before we are assuming that the mass of the electron is negligible so in other words it's zero we're not going to take it into account so the mass of the original molecule is going to be the same as the mass of this ion here. So if the machine measures the mass to charge ratio of this, what it's actually telling us is the mass of the original molecule. And remember, if you've watched the previous video, the Z stands for the charge. The charge is one plus, so we're dividing the mass of this particle by one plus, and so we get M is the same. So I'm going to demonstrate this with an actual organic molecule. So we've got ethanol here. So I'm firing electrons at the ethanol molecule. And the purpose of that is to knock out one electron. So I'm putting a one plus charge onto this molecule. So it's going to become an ion, positively charged ion. So it would have this formula, CH3, CH2, OH, and we put the plus charge there and there's the electron that's been knocked out. So the mass of this is essentially the same as the original mass of the molecule. So you can see I've drawn up some axes now. So we have the mass to charge ratio running along the x-axis and the y-axis is just as before the relative abundance. So we would expect to see in the mass spectrum of ethanol a peak at 46. Why 46? Because the mass of two carbons, three, four, five, six hydrogens and an oxygen is of course 46. So that will be due to, I'm going to draw this out again, CH3, CH2OH+. The most common mistake I see on students' homeworks or tests or whatever they forget to write the positive charge. Everything measured by a mass spectrometer must have a positive charge. Now this peak at 46 for ethanol has got a special name. It's called the molecular ion peak. So what I sometimes say to students is the most important peak in a mass spectrum for an organic molecule is the one furthest to the right hand side or the one with the highest mass to charge ratio because effectively this peak here is telling us the MR of the molecule under investigation so the molecule that's gone into the mass spectrometer we now know has an MR of 46 so we're going to look at fragmentation now and how fragmentation occurs in the mass spectrometer. You can see I've written in red there and I'll come back to this in a minute. Rule of thumb, when you do fragmentation, always start with the molecular ion. So that's the original molecule. So we've turned it into the molecular ion. 
So this is the positively charged ion of the original molecule. And remember, this has been bombarded with electrons, so it's high energy. So what could happen? The One of the bonds could break. So let's give it, let's break it across this CC single bond. So I'll put them over there. We'll have a look at what's formed there. So we've broken this bond and you can see here I've got a CH3 group. Now that carbon has effectively lost an electron and so the representation of that would be a CH3 plus ion. The way we represent the rest of the molecule, so if we have a look at this, we've got a CH2. OH. So essentially we've broken it here. The positive charge is there. This would actually be in the form of a radical and so we would represent that with the dot which shows the unpaired electron. Now remember mass spectrometers can only measure positively charged ions. So the way I've drawn that, this ion here would be detected. So this is a methyl group and the mass of this group is 12 plus 3 so that would be that would have a mass to charge ratio of 15. So a very common fragment peak in organic mass spectra is a peak at 15 m over z 15 and that's because many organic molecules contain methyl groups. So that's one example of a fragment peak. So if we go back to the mass spectrum for ethanol, you can see the molecular ion peak is there where we put it before. But we've also now got this extra peak here and this is due to a methyl fragment. So the correct formula for that would be CH3+. Now I'm sure you can appreciate there are lots of other ways that you can fragment um, an ethanol molecule. So there would be more than just two peaks in the spectrum. So I won't do every single possibility, but I'll just give you a couple more examples. If we fragmented it here and we went for, let's go for, break it like that. So I've taken the hydrogen off and I've got the rest of the molecule there. You can see the way I've broken that, that this would have the positive charge because it's effectively lost the electron. So that would be drawn as CH3CH2O plus and we'd also have the H radical. And so this is what is detected. That's got a mass of one less than the original molecule. And so we would see another peak at 45. Move that over there. And that's due to this fragment, CH3, CH2, O plus. I'll do one more and I'll break this bond now, this carbon oxygen bond, and I'll break it like that. So this has got the positive charge, this would be the radical. So how would we, what would we see in the spectrum? Well, what have we got here? We've got CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2 plus, and that is an OH radical. So th the way I've broken that, this is the one that's detected. So what's the mass of this ethyl group? So it's two carbons, five hydrogens, that's got a mass of 24 plus 5 is 29, so it's about there, so 29. What's this fragment causing this peak? Well, it's the CH3, CH2 plus. So you can appreciate now we can start building up bits of the molecule from the fragment peaks. So the peak at 15 is saying that we've got methyl, a methyl group in this molecule. 
We've got a fragment at 29, which obviously relates to the ethyl group. And you can see that we can build up a picture of the molecule using these fragment peaks. So we'll finish off with um, a very typical exam type question. So suppose we had structure isomers. So we've got propan-1-ol and propan-2-ol. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how the mass spectra of these would differ. So the problem we've got is they've both got the same mass because of the same number of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. So they both have a molecular ion peak at 60. Remember that's due to the loss of an electron from the original molecule. So we need to be thinking about what fragments are on one of the isomers that wouldn't be present on the other one. And we're going to use those fragment peaks to distinguish between the two. So let's suppose we fragment here. And we'll give this fragment the positive charge. So this would be effectively a propyl fragment. So if we have a think about the MR of that, so that's 36 for those three carbons, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. So we would see a fragment peak at 43. That's going to be about there, 43. So that's due to CH3, CH2, CH2 plus. Now you can see in the propan 2 all isomer, fragmentation could occur here. And we'll put the positive charge there. So you can see a problem now. We've got three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So effectively, we've got the same mass. So we would still see a fragment at 43. So we haven't solved the problem just yet. So that would be due to CH3, CH, that's the plus there now, CH3. I've fragmented propan one all slightly differently now, so I'm fragmented between the two carbons here, these two. I'm putting the positive charge on this left-hand side piece, so that would be a CH3, CH2 plus fragment. So that's an ethyl group, that's got an, a mass of 29 from those two carbons and five hydrogens. Is it possible to make a fragment with a mass of 29 from propan 2 all. So let's just have a look. If we fragment here, we've got 15, or if the positive charge went there, that would be 45. Remember the whole thing's worth 60, so that's not possible. If we fragment there, then we're going to get 15 again or 45, depending on where the positive charge lands. It's not looking likely that we can make something with 29. So, unless I'm mistaken, this propan 2 all would not have a peak at 29. And that would enable us to distinguish between the two. Now, the only other thing to point out is that mass spectrometers are linked to computers and the computer would have a huge database, a huge library of spectra in its memory. And just as we saw in infrared spectroscopy, that the fingerprint region is absolutely unique to the molecule. The same goes for organic mass spectra. So the fragmentation pattern will be unique to that particular molecule or that isomer of that molecule. And so the computer just sets away looking for a match. And when it finds the match, it can say with confidence, this spectrum belongs to this organic molecule.